You walk into a data engineer interview. They open up a Databricks notebook and drop a data set in front of you. Can you scale it with PySpark or do you try to force it through Pandas and hope it doesn't crash? I've been in that room over 25 years. I've watched candidates freeze because they only knew Pandas. And I've seen others that walk out with offers because they knew how to use PySpark and Databricks the way it was meant to be used. That single skill has made the difference between rejection and a signed offer letter. In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to show you how to run circles around pandas and walk out of your interview knowing that you're getting an offer. We're gonna cover PySpark fundamentals in under 60 seconds, walk through five interview ready coding samples, and I'll give you one practice exercise, three interview questions with answers, and a resource that's gonna help you stand out in your next interview. Here is what you need to know about Spark. It takes a big job processing billions of rows and breaks it down into a bunch of smaller tasks. Those tasks get spread across a cluster of machines, then pulled back together when the work's all done. PySpark is simply Spark with a Python wrapper. You write Python code, but Spark handles all the heavy lifting and parallel in the background. Instead of squeezing rows into your laptop's memory like pandas, Spark data frames live across that Databricks cluster. Think of it this way. Pandas is a pickup truck. It's useful, reliable, but you're going to max it out quick. Spark is a freight train. Same idea of moving stuff from A to B, but it's built to haul massive loads without ever slowing down. Why does this matter in Databricks? Because Databricks is where Spark lives in production. It's collaborative, cloud native, and optimized for big data. Running PySpark locally is practicing basketball in your driveway. Running PySpark in Databricks is stepping onto the NBA court. This is where companies actually play the game. When employers say they want Spark experience, what they mean is, can you deliver value with PySpark inside of Databricks? That is the test. And here is how you pass it. Example one, reading a library of Parquet files in a volume. A volume the folder structure within Databricks. Take a look at this code. In Databricks, you rarely load one file at a time. You're going to load a whole directory, a volume with a path with a bunch of parquet files in it. And it lets Spark treat those hundreds of parquet files as one data frame. So you're doing columnar reads, schema evolution, and you have fewer headaches. Where people trip up here is not handling the schema drift across all those files. Your interview question is, why is Parquet preferred over CSV at scale? And what do you get by reading a directory path instead of a single file at a time? The answer here is Parquet is columnar and compressed. Smaller storage, faster column scans, and you're pointing to a directory that unions all the files into one data frame. Example number two, transformations with column and filters and an explanation of lazy evaluation. Take a look at this code. Transformations, they build a plan. Nothing runs until an action like display or count or evaluation get triggered. Where people trip up here is expecting immediate results like pandas when something's gonna fail. Your interview question, explain lazy evaluation and spark. This one trips a lot of people up. Some people don't even understand that it's a thing. Here's your answer. Spark delays execution until an action occurs. That allows global optimization of your DAGs, reducing shuffles and IO issues. Example number three, joins and aggregations at scale. Take a look at this code. With pandas, you're restarting the kernel just to get it to stop spinning. PySpark scales it across that whole cluster again. Where people trip up is defaulting to shuffle joins when they could do broadcasts. Your interview question is, when joining very large tables, what join strategies help? Your answer here is broadcast a small table and you're avoiding those shuffles. Otherwise, we are letting Spark distribute the join. And so for a small table or a small file, that distribution can actually cause some latency. Example number four, 
window functions. Here is the example code. Window functions are interview candy. Whether you are a junior, a senior, a staff engineer, showing your mastery of window functions, whether it's in SQL or PySpark or any other language is going to show off your ability to work with data. Where people trip up though, is mixing up things like partition by and order by. Make sure that you've got that order correct and how it's being used. Your interview question is, what's the difference between group by and window functions? Your answer is group by collapses the rows. Window functions preserve rows and add additional context. Example number five, write to Delta and do it in a partitioned way. Take a look at this code. Writing to Delta with partitions shows production readiness. Where people trip up though is over partitioning. Over partitioning is bad. For those of you that don't know about over indexing, be sure to check out that video that's linked up at the top there. Your bonus tip here is that people sometimes confuse partitioning with clustering. Don't do that. There are two different things. Make sure you understand the difference. Your interview question, how do partitioning and file size affect performance? And your answer here is pruned partitions reduce scans. Too many small files end up slowing things down. And then you lose your advantage of using Spark. Now, your bonus practical exercise, take the 2024 sales data frame Compute daily revenue per region, write it to Delta, partition by sales date, then read only June back using partition printing. Finally, time that read and understand what those efficiency gains are before and after you use partitioning. Employees don't want coders. They want engineers who can handle messy, massive data sets and deliver insights at scale. PySpark on Databricks proves that you can do that. And I have seen countless candidates freeze on spark questions. Those that can describe pipelines like these walk away with real job offers. Now your practical exercise here, again, calculate daily sales totals in PySpark. Your interview question, what is lazy evaluation in PySpark and why does it matter? Your resource fundamentals of data engineering and also, Coursera's Big Data with PySpark. All of these links are down in the comments, along with that file that you're looking for that we're talking about for the exercise. Grab that link, go download that stuff from the website, and do these exercises. Let me know down in the comments how it went. One of the biggest mistakes people continue to make is not properly clustering their tables. Partitioning alone isn't enough. Understanding liquid clustering takes your Databricks game to the next level. Check out that video and learn exactly what you're missing right now.